everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for being here. Um, let's get started. So um, as we get started, I want to ask everyone here to imagine you're an investment analyst. It's uh, four in the afternoon, and your colleague emails you to say they have to take a project to the investment decision committee next week. They're so sorry for the short time frame, but is there any way you can do a quick review of all the publicly available information you can find about the project to make sure that there are no red flags? In fact, they even have some of this information handy that they can send over if that will help, like the most recent annual report. You say, yes, you'll do your best to make it happen and open the email they send you with a 700-page attachment. My colleagues and I frequently face this dilemma. Maybe you, all folk, maybe you folks face this dilemma, too. Uh, my name is Atya Karmali, and my colleague Blaise Sanwidi and I work alongside 200 experts who cover a variety of topics like climate change, biodiversity and corporate governance at the International Finance Corporation. The International Finance Corporation is a member of the World Bank Group and is the world's largest global development institution focused on making investments in the private sector. This past year, we invested almost $37 billion in companies in emerging markets. And when making an investment, we look carefully at the sustainability impact of a client's operations and consider a multitude of issues, like their track record for worker safety, methods of pollution prevention, or approaches to engaging stakeholders. And helping clients with meeting their financial, development impact, and sustainability goals continues once they're in our portfolio through input from a team of experts. But let's not forget about our investment analyst who is beginning on page one of that 700 page document because successfully delivering this investment strategy means analysts must review between 10 to 20 documents a week, often hundreds of pages in length and frequently filled with technical jargon. In other words, the amount of information you have to review can be vast, and you often only have a few days, and on one recent occasion, hours in which to make this happen. Now imagine you have a colleague who never gets tired, never sleeps, and can read 19,000 sentences a minute. Meet Malena, or machine learning, environment, social, and governance analyst. Malena is an artificial intelligence, and Malena has been taught to read documents and find issues of relevance to my colleagues, like the amount of water a company consumed in its operations, or the number of women members on a company's board, or any impacts the company posed to the health of communities in the past year. Not only does Malena tell my colleague if a word or phrase is found in a document, but Malena also gives her the context or sentiment in which these words occur in text. For instance, Malena tells her if the words water consumption are found in a positive context, in a sentence that says water consumption has decreased in a company's operations. Or alternatively, Malena tells her if the phrase women on the board is found in a negative context, if it's in a sentence that talks about how a company still has to meet its board diversity targets. This helps my colleague understand what a company is doing well, where they're having problems, and get to the important stuff quickly so she can get on with making her investment recommendation. I imagine what you folks are really interested in is how did we use data and AI to build Malena? 
we were able to successfully scale what started as a proof of concept in 2019. This exercise helped us realize that institutions like ours can be particularly good laboratories for developing specialized versions of artificial intelligence applications like Milena, because institutions like, like ours have what these models love, and the reason we're all here today, data. Being in business for nearly 70 years means the International Finance Corporation has generated a lot of data, totaling thousands of terabytes. Much of this is unstructured data or text in PDF documents, Word, maps, and we're a financial institution, so we also have structured data in tables and databases. Using Databricks Lakehouse, we were able to accelerate the development of custom machine learning applications trained on these unique data sets covering thousands of environment, social, and governance topics in well over 100 emerging markets. Our vice president describes this as bottling lightning. By leveraging faster data processing, Coupled with GPU compute that scales on demand, we are successfully designing, training, and running large language models to analyze massive amounts of text using natural language processing. Blaze will talk in detail about how we fine-tuned the Malena algorithms to recognize a taxonomy of over 1,200 risk terms. Over the past four years, we have used documents going back to 2001 to create 150,000 examples of training data to teach Malena the meaning of terms like greenhouse gas emissions, board composition, or biodiversity management plan. As of today, Malena has read over 250,000 documents and created insights for 10,000 companies in 186 countries in 26 sectors. We've already talked about one of Malena's strengths, which is understanding context. Understanding context has allowed Malena to identify more than 32 million risk terms from all the documents it has read, and to classify these as positive, negative, or neutral. And why is this of value to you? Classifying risks saves time reading and organizing information, gives you a head start, and helps you understand what a company is doing well and what they may be struggling with. Malena's other big strength is speed. It can read 19,000 sentences a minute. Compared with human readers who read 10 to 20 sentences a minute, I checked that is 950 times faster. Documents like that 700-page annual report are analyzed in a matter of minutes. And after reviewing documents, Malena structures the findings and generates dashboards on sustainability performance. These dashboards make the relevant information easy to find and display results through different lenses like document, or sentiment, or risk type. What does this help you do? At the press of a button, our users can unlock curated information from many lengthy documents, PDFs, tables, running into thousands of pages, disregard the non-essential information, and focus on what matters. This helps you make better informed decisions. And this has been a game changer to how we do business. For example, we have been able to help our colleagues reduce the amount of time it takes to compile an insightful company profile from weeks to half a day. And while this has increased productivity and reduced errors, 
it has given our experts more time to scale up what humans, for now at least, still do better than machines, which is unstructured problem solving or thinking creatively and innovating to find answers to problems for which the rules do not exist. In this manner, the International Finance Corporation, a development institution with the mandate to address climate change and poverty, respond to pandemics and conflicts, is harnessing the power of big data and AI by making use of our historical data sets to train custom artificial intelligence applications for our use in operations and also to deliver the World Bank Group's first AI as a service. Because while initially conceived as an in-house solution for our experts, Malena is in beta testing with other users. Why? One of the reasons or one of the words that I heard over and over today, which is about democratizing access. As a development finance institution, we are seeking to provide other users with the capacity to read and classify text and increase investor confidence. And we are hoping to release Malena for use externally in August this year, a full year ahead of schedule. And we're racing to get Malena out to provide a solution to a key challenge to meeting the sustainable development goals, which is the gap in sustainability data. This data gap has been identified as a blocker to making sustainable long-term investments, especially in the parts of the world where development needs are the greatest. And as a consequence, the gaps in the global goals are the most significant. This impetus to share Malena is also motivated by research both our own as well as that of others, that finds that news, impact reports, and other corporate disclosures like bond prospectuses were underused when assessing the investment performance of companies in emerging markets because investors do not have the in-house capacity to review all this information. Therefore, by using Malena to read and structure this underused information, investors can now easily assess these companies that went uncovered. But what is the connection between the Sustainable Development Goals and investors? The funding gap to meet the global goals is estimated at two to three trillion dollars annually. But in contrast, there are almost $200 trillion invested in capital markets, a small proportion of which, if redirected, can play a crucial role to fill this gap. And Malena can help make this happen. Over to Blaze to tell you guys how we use Databricks Lakehouse to scale Malena. Oh, thanks, guys. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Atia. Um, so what's the infrastructure set up for Malena, and how did we use Microsoft Azure and Databricks Lake South to train and deploy large language model in production? As a reminder, the majority of the data processed by Malena are unstructured text data. Um, typically, those are lengthy and very complex PDF and Word document. And these documents are coming from three main sources. The first data source is IFC data. Um, typically, IFC project disclosure, um, investment review summaries, and you know, project supervision text. The second data sources are company public disclosure, annual report, sustainability report, bond practices. And the third data source is alternate data, including daily news report. How does the data ingestion process work? We use Data Factory, Azure Data Factory, to organize our data ingestion pipeline. Um, every day we have more than 20 uh, data engine pipeline running in the backend to update data and, and you know, pulling 
of the most recent you know, news article, annual report, and system of two report. And then the ingested data is stored in our you know, Azure Data Lake next gen platform. And our storage approach is aligned with the Databricks um, you know, Lake House storage principle of having three layers of storage. Um, bronze, it's where we lend the raw data data coming from internal and external system. And silver is where the bronze data are clean, conform, and harmonized. And gold data storage is where we, you know, we typically store the already consumption data. And the benefit of storing those complex PDF and Word, you know, document in the uh, data lake is particular value because we, we have the mounting system between Databricks and Data Lake, allowing us to you know, efficiently perform additional data engineering tasks, including you know, document duplication, you know, name entity recognition. Um, um, but what are we doing exactly with Databricks apart from data engineering? The first answer to this question is fine tuning large language model. And we started with Google Bird back in 2020. Um, and now we transitioned to Roberta, an open source you know, English language model released by Meta. And we use, as Atia said, supervised machine learning to fine tune um, the Roberta 125 million parameters. And the fine tune model is also safe and Databricks model registry, including or the YAML file, the, um, the model weight, and the model, the function model of uh, performance metrics, uh, like accuracy, F1 score, and all. And next, uh, it's running inference. Um, we have daily inference, uh, Spark job running, uh, using the function model, and um, every night at midnight we have a, a you know, a scattered job that's, you know, running and updating the, um, the inference database. In addition to batch inferences, we complemented um, those batch inference job with real-time inference job or via Azure function um, to, you know, to answer to some requests by the client to have the real-time, um, you know, inference by the model. Both Real-time inference job via Azure function and batch inference are displayed uh, to the end users, internal and external users via Power BI interfaces. How does this setup allow us to do? Um, we, we have been able to train, function, and deploy you know, AI model for language translation name entity recognition, like I, I said before, Q&A, question answering using GPT models recently, and then our most mature use case is the EAG sentiment analysis. And I will go deeper and explain how we did it, how we used um, Lakes, um, Lakes House and you know, Databricks to, uh, to train the sentiment analysis model. Here is the, the Malena architecture design. Um, the first choice we made in back in 2020 is to adopt the transformers architecture because it's typically performing better than the others uh, architecture like uh, long short term memories. The blue box here just illustrate um, the base model layers, the Roberta's layers, and then we apply a transformative addition um, to add um, EAG augmentation attention layer to allow the model to be more focused on uh, EAG specific risk term, um, you know, covering climate governance, corporate governance, social and environmental terms. Um, most importantly, this is helpful when we have more than one risk term 
present in the sentence for the model to be able to predict multiple sentiment within the same sentence. And this is unique to, to the Malena model. How does this work in practice? So um, the typical input sentence for Malena is a sentence with um, a risk term and here climate. And the second risk term that uh, I was talking about could be CO2 emission. And then the next step is fine tuning. You know, we use the, the base model, Roberta base model. On top of this, we add the label data. Remember, it's supervised machine learning. We add the label data. And because Roberta is just, um, not just, but it's, it's a foundation model, it's uh, predicting the next word, next word in the sentence, we complemented Roberta with the classification head along the model, the fountain model, to conduct sentiment analysis. Typically predict three type of sentiment, negative, neutral, and positive sentiment. Once we have the fountain model trained and saved and registry, we can now you know, use it for prediction, and this is a typical you know, output of the model. Remember, we use supervised machine learning, and supervised machine learning means that we need label data. Um, high quality training data is crucial. Of, it's very important for any supervised machine learning. And we observe that you know, the model performance increase uh, with better and cleaner label data. So we ask our specialists to help us create more than 150,000 training data covering all ESG aspects environmental, social, climate, and corporate governance terms. And we apply some very strong quality controls to, those, or to this process of creating label data. The first quality control that we apply is to define a very robust and comprehensive labeling rules on make sure that all the labelers are aligned and following the same rules. Next, we are only using a data point to train the model where we have the consensus between at least two labelers. And because we, we know that this is, you know, there are some costs associated, we embedded in the application an active learning feature allowing the active users to, prov uh, to provide feedback on the model prediction. Uh, those feedback are then captured on the back end and then review one more time for a sanitary check before you know, using or uh, to retrain the model. And the training data you know, coverage um, is you know, completely aligned with our inference data. It's covering EG news report, our internal project documentation, uh, company public disclosure, and uh, as I said before, the 15,000 you know, active users feedback on model prediction. So how did we evaluate the model? So we evaluate the model by splitting the, you know, the training data into two subsets. The first subset is around 95% you know, of the, the data for training. And the 15% remaining subset is used to test the model on the unseen or you know, labeled data set. Through this process, the current Malena achieves um, accuracy of 92% and 91% uh, F1 score, which is significantly better than the out-of-the-box you know, sentiment um, analysis model that we, we have tested so far. What are the benefits of those kind of models? For us, the main benefit of those models is their uh, scalability, their ability to l analyze a large amount of data in a consistent way. Um, Atia already talked about um, some of the, you know, the benefits we have seen in terms of reducing the amount of time it takes our specialists to review documents. 
but um, another example is the reduction of 45% of, of overdue supervision text review. And also the um, capability of the model to assign a sentiment score, EAG sentiment score to a specific document and then use this score to prioritize the document review. One last example is the, our ability through Lakes, Databricks Lake South to review a hundred of legal agreements consisting of 7,000 pages just within 12 minutes. But let's address the elephant in the room. There have been a lot of media news raising some concern on, you know, on AI, using AI. That's why we think that trust is critical. Users, stakeholders may trust that their data is privacy is respected, their data is used transparently, and uh, also their data is you know, protected or you know, maintained securely. That's why we are developing um, you know, a data and model governance framework uh, covering AI ethics, fairness, and explainability on how the model makes prediction. Um, this way, we think that it can um, increase trust and confidence on the model, Malena model prediction, and make sure that those technology like Malena are you know, adopted in the um, inclusive and equitable way. How did we enable it in practice? Right. We have developed a um, transparency dashboard comprising six pillars, um, inspired by the IBM fundamental properties of um, for AI ethics, covering model predictive performance, fairness, and explainability. And for us, those three are the most important. Um, what's the predictive performance of Malena? Uh, the predictive performance measures how well Malena is able to appropriately address the use case. In our specific uh, situation, conduct EAG sentiment analysis. And because it's our uh, classification problems, we typically use the model accuracy and F1 score to, to assess uh, this pillar. The next one is fairness. The most difficult to assess, but a great addition. And fairness is the concept of justice. Uh, the fairness score of Malena um, evaluates uh, Malena's capability to predict EAG sentiment without unfairly penalizing a specific group of, uh, any specific group of population. It could be a specific country, a specific region, or a specific uh, sector. And the last, the, you know, the third most important one is explainability. Another great addition, uh, especially for the end users, um, the explainability score assess how um, Malena is able to provide some reasoning behind the sentiment and um, prediction. And we implement it at, you know, at the model level, typically for you know, those who have access to the model to manage bias, for example, but also at the sentence level. Um, and this is typically useful for, um, for the, the end users. What's our roadmap for, for the future? So over 2023, we plan to expand um, the language, you know, the, the Malena capability to analyze different language. And next week on Friday, we'll be deploying a new feature to analyze uh, Spanish, Portuguese, and French document. And the next thing we want to do is implement Databricks model serving. Um, especially because we would like to improve our real-time, you know, inference serving. And this will be typically useful because in August, we'll be making Malena available for public use. So, 
And the last thing we want to um, implement is the um, Unity Catalog. And we heard a lot today about Unity Catalog. Um, for us, it will be a, implementing Unity Catalog will be a good setup uh, to leverage another Databricks uh, product called you know, Delta Sharing uh, to typically share the data across IFC and other institutions. So, why is all this important to you? We think that establishing a solid and powerful data infrastructure like Databricks Lakes House combined with LLMs is key for addressing industry-specific industry challenges. Secondly, we think that AI combined with data is key to address industry-specific challenges. Um, I mean, domain-specific AI are very important for addressing industry-specific challenge. And Malena is one of them. And finally, thirdly, um, I've seen Malena is a great example of how a combination of data and AI enables a stronger investment confidence in ESG and positive impact investing. And remember that two hundred trillion dollars and there's you know potential positive impact for emerging market. And we invite you to join us in amplifying this positive impact through Malena. Thank you.